What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're gonna be diving on into another zombie apocalypse survival RPG called Far Gone. Uh, dead Polly, Surround Dead. There's a lot of them out there right now that are all kind of like zombie apocalypse survival sandboxes that have senti assets and all that kind of stuff. This is a new one that's been added to the pile. So the developer is solo developing this entire thing. Reached out to me this morning and asked me to take a look at the game. I've played it for about an hour, wandering around the map, kind of surviving modding my weapons, things like that. Uh, it feels fairly polished and tight. There's definitely some stuff that I'd definitely like to see changed on up, but I think there's promise here, and the developer has been patching literally every day since the game came out, and so he seems to be hitting the ground and moving fast, and I like to reward that kind of thing with coverage. So anyways, let's go ahead and check out Far Gone. If after watching this you wanted to get the early access of Far Gone. I've got a link for you down below in the description. On top of that, you can also take a look down there for Discord and Twitch links, just in case you wanted to hang out live. The map is pretty small in the game right now. Uh, they've basically got like the sandbox survival stuff in the game, and there's like a couple of storyline quests, but that stuff is all forthcoming as time goes along. This game definitely seems to have a little bit of a stalker vibe to it, which I think is what makes it a little bit different from Surrounded, uh, which Surround Dead is kind of like... It's kind of like Daisy with Sinti assets. This one leans a little bit more into kind of like the spooky stalker direction with like weird anomalies and radiation, stuff like that. Uh, let's go ahead and start off. We got to make a character. The game does have character creation, which is fairly important, I would say, personally, for like an RPG. There's a bunch of different hairstyles we can play around with right here. There's a bunch of different beards and things, just in case that's your jam. Uh, that beard, what what beard looks like my beard? I don't get, yeah, that one's like my beard right there. I got like a big gap on the side, but I also have a gap in the middle. It's like a Hawaiian people thing or something. I don't know. Keanu has the same thing, so I'm calling it, Keanu has it, so I'm calling it a Hawaiian thing. I don't know if it's a Hawaiian thing, but I can't grow hair in the middle of my lip and like the sides of my mouth are like smooth as a baby's butt, but I can grow like a full beard everywhere else. I don't know. I haven't met too many people that have that just like I do. I assume it's a genetic thing. Yeah, let's go for the big old hobo beard, dude. That sounds good. We'll name ourselves The Trash Man. There we go. That's a good post-apocalyptic name for walking around the wasteland. The game does feature a hardcore start where you have nothing to begin with. It does have permadeath, which means you can't respawn. If you die, you are dead. I find that infinitely appealing, but we're not going to do that here today. Let's go ahead and create our character. We'll dive on into Far Gone, and we'll kind of see if this is something that's worth keeping an eye on. It's very, very early on in development, and so with projects like this, especially in the zombie apocalypse, Nebulous, it's always very, very difficult to give a recommendation because there's just something about zombie apocalypse games where they, like, release early and then they, like, fix everything afterwards and add all the stuff afterwards. It's like zombie apocalypse games, man. Something like that. All right, so here we are at the beginning of the game. Speak to Sal at the bus at the end of the village to learn about opportunities. Okay. He'll also give me some coffee. Uh, Sal is like literally right over here. For the purposes of gameplay, I've turned off all the foliage. A lot of the foliage and trees in this game have some pretty rough jaggies, and I found it kind of like jarring to the eye. It doesn't seem like there's any anisotropy or anything to help fix that or like make it better, so I just disabled it. Apparently, there's a lot of missing peepos around here, as tends to happen when the living, when the dead are eating the living. Not sure I've seen you around here before. I'm Sal. I heard you run things here. Run things? No, not at all. But when you're the guy who holds all the guns, people tend to listen to you. Listen, I I'm not that sure what you're doing out here, but let me give you some advice. Make some friends and get yourself a nice camp set up. I may not like anyone but people like me, and that sure helps me when the dead come a-knocking. Tell you what. Talk to me again if you want a job, and I'll give you a camping part to help you get started. And here's a coffee on the house. Welcome to the Barrens. Uh, we are in a zone called the Barrens right now, which is basically where the zombies have wiped out everybody. All these characters you see walking around, you can't talk to them. You can ask them to join you. Uh, they will volunteer if you're friendly enough with their faction to come hang out with you. For right now, I've done that quest right there when I was, like, testing the game out for just kind of, like, my impressions purposes. Speaking of which, impressions will be coming at the end of the video with a number of things that I think could be fixed or tightened up or done a little bit better. But up until then, uh, you could talk to everybody. There's factions. That mission's kind of hard for us right now. It's not going to be an easy mission. I promise you that. And so anyways, we're going to head on down the hill. And we're going to see if we can do some light scavenging. In the bottom left-hand corner, you will see that we have water, we have food, we have sleep, we have our overall health with a little heart, and we have stamina, uh, which is basically how long we can sprint. This game does have a very generous sprint in my experience so far. 
you should be able to like run for a good long time and in fact I do like the running animation I think it looks good I think that the character moves a little bit too fast though there's not quite enough weight to it in my opinion there's not enough clomp to the run uh, so I think it could be slowed down a little bit and I think it could get a little bit more like clomp to it while you're running a little bit more weight a little bit more heaviness or even better the heaviness could accentuate because they do have a weight system in this game as you pick up items, you'll have more and more inside your inventory. And so maybe as your weight goes up, you get more stompy clompy. I don't know, but either way, let's go ahead. Oh, we've got our first zombie over here. What kind of zombie is he? The zombie that's getting shot in the face is what he is. Go to sleep, buddy. Uh, we've dropped our first zombie. Reload animations and whatnot feel pretty good in this game. I have found that the gunshot sounds are a little bit all over the place. Uh, some of them sound very, very good. Some of them sound very, very canned. It just kind of goes gun to gun, weapon to weapon, uh, whether or not you're suppressed. In fact, I found that suppressed shooting felt the best. Uh, you can mod your guns in this game. That is an option that is freely open and available to you. I think for most of the guns I've found, there's like three or four mods you can install if you've got the scrap and the stuff laying around to make it happen. I'm going to click on a flash flashlight real fast because I can't see worth a damn right now. All right, so inside this little convenience store, it doesn't look to me like there's too much laying around. Yeah, not too much laying around, although the loot seems to be somewhat procedural because the last time I played through here, uh, there was a big old box of bullets on that shelf right there. So it may be worth sweeping places that I normally do not sweep because I've already been there. So that's a good thing to be aware of. Let's hit this little motel area over here. I do think that the game is like maybe a little bit over contrasted. I have a really, really hard time. On the landscape, it's fine. But with the way the lighting gets blocked or when you have lighting at certain angles, things can get very, very dark and sort of wash together. Let's see. A cowboy. We got ourselves a ranch hat right there. Yee-hoo. Okay, I'm going to be a cowboy out here. Uh, we also got one 9mm bullet just rattling around in the bottom of somebody's business briefcase. My man went to work and was like, today might be the day. I don't know. I'll throw it in the briefcase. Uh, we've got ourselves some Oxycontin right there, which is always a fun thing to find in the apocalypse. Get yourself nice and toasty woasty. We've got a busted TV over here. Doesn't look like there's anything I can loot inside this room. Let's go to this last one down at the end of the hall and see what we got. Nothing. Goose eggs. Okay. Since we struck out on that side, we've got some survivors coming on through. They're not hostile. Uh, they are just looking for resources and stuff, just like we are. And so hopefully they will kill anything that's left over. Let's see. A wanderer's outfit. I'll take it. And a military hooten. All right. I'll take the military hooten. Uh, it doesn't look... Oh, we can loot this right here. Nothing inside of it, though, so it's kind of a waste of time. Oh, I can't open that door from right there. All right, fair enough. I'm trying to see what was in the window. It's like a swamp cooler or something. All right, so that door. Oh, yeah, it's like bricked up from the other. It's like boarded up from the other side. That one's not lootable, but the previous one was. So it looks like there's some hit or miss right there as to whether or not one thing or another can be looted. And in here, there is a dead guy. A dead guy with a med kit. The med kit, unfortunately, is empty. That explains why he's a dead guy. Nothing inside of there either, and it doesn't look like there's anything on the floor, so we'll just kind of, like, leave him where he lays. I don't know if there's fall damage, so I'm going to test it. Uh, there was no fall damage jumping down from the second floor, but, like, a second floor fall is not that far, in all honesty. I don't know if it's worth it to go through the cars or anything. I don't know if they're, like, interactable or anything yet, but I would like to see the ability to pop open the back doors on vehicles, uh, pop open trunks, things of that nature. There's a scary noise. I don't know what the scary noise is, but I hear a rumbly bumblies, dude. I hear a rumbly bumblies in the darkness. I see something over there. So I'm going to go see what that is. What's in that direction? Where am I right now? I have questions. Maybe that little red dot right there by Lynn's Rest? That's point view. Doesn't look like there's too much on the map around here. Maybe we go up to that big city right there and see what we can dig out of some of these places. Maybe we find something good. I don't know. I don't know what that green dot is on the map either, but I very much like the fact that you break out like a little PDA or something when you want to go to your inventory. I dig that a lot. I think that's pretty cool. So anyway, we'll put that away real fast. We'll break this open. Is the Wanderer outfit better than what I have? Tis not better than what I have, but I can't put on a cowboy hat. There we go. Oh, that ruins my hairstyle, though. 
What about the military hat? That also ruins my hairstyle. Now I want to have my, I want to have my rad sort of Aragorn haircut while I wander around the post-apocalypse. I'm gonna head off into the hinterland. The game is kind of sparsely populated right now. There's not like a, a whole lot of things around from what I've seen. It's a lot of empty space walking. However, if you've ever played DayZ, uh, you will be acclimated to that, and you will understand that a principal point of zombie apocalypse games is really developers testing the line on like. How far can I make my player auto run before he uninstalls? There's a little something. Oh. I was going to say, there's a little something on the road over there, but... It appears as though we've made friends. Will you straighten out for a second? Man. Just wobbling all over the place. Wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble. I hear gunshots. That's probably not a good thing. That's probably bad for me. He's the business zombie, doing the business of an undead guy. There we go. Zombies don't die from one headshot in this game. I don't know exactly why. It may be the fact that we're using a Makarov. I think this is supposed to be like a Makarov. Although it doesn't really, like, it kind of looks like a Makarov, but not really. I don't know. It's, it's got the PM as its name, though, so, like, I'm just going to assume that it's a Makarov. All right, let's go ahead and run on in here. A 9mm Makarov, oddly enough. Uh, let's see if we can find anything inside whatever. It looks like a series of barns, maybe. I don't know. We need to scavenge to our heart's content because then I can go back to, to the Wanderer's Town or the Runner's Town or whatever it is, and I can buy some ammo. Ammo is kind of at a premium in this game, and I promise you, you don't want to run out of ammo and hear that dead man's click around the time that you're like engaging with people that also have guns and shoot back at you because there are bandits in this game. And they do enjoy a fun little bit of... What is up with that zombie right there? I don't know if he's wearing a hazmat suit or what he's doing. Let's go around the back of this building and kind of see what we can lock in here. Looks like it's just like log storage. Some wood piles. Oh, cool, an axe. Nice. He's busting shots. Oh my god, okay, that guy's got a skull mask on. I don't know how I feel about any of this. Oh god. Okay, alright, fair enough, I'm being shot at, I think. I just wanted to loot my axe, man, that's all that I ever wanted. Oh, I'm not trying to fight any of you guys, I'm bailing, I'm getting out of here. Maybe I kite some zombies onto him or something. I don't even know if I got enough bullets. These guys are, like, the bandits can be a little bit tanky, all right? They can be, uh, like, un poco tanky. Luckily, they seem to be incredibly inaccurate and unable to hit me, so that's good. That's like a start. Yeah, I think I might be a little bit outgunned. I think I'm just going to kind of get over this hillside, and I'm not going to deal with bandits anymore. Uh, I wanted to loot the wood pile. I was excited about a melee weapon. Unfortunately, game don't want me to have a melee weapon. Looks like my bleed fell off. I got some painkillers, but not much else. The game does seem to have, like, item interactions, but they're kind of, like, hit or miss or spotty. So, like, for the painkillers, it actually looks like you're using a painkiller. Uh, but with the different foods, it only ever eats a protein bar. And with the different liquids, he only ever takes a drink out of his canteen. Uh, that's really kind of like the, the big risk when it comes to... That, that's kind of like the risk when it comes to putting eating and drinking animations in your game. Is that you gotta kind of make one that matches up object... Oh, he did die from one headshot. Yay. Maybe he got softened up by the banditos. There we go. We'll drop her too. I just want my loot. That's all that I want. A bunker key and a 9mm round. In general, I have found that the text in the game is a little tiny bit small for a lot of the interactions. Oh, I'm still being shot at. Beautiful. Looks like they're milling about over this way. Alright, never mind, I take it back. I don't want to hang out with you guys at all. It's almost nighttime, so maybe I will take Big Sal's quest. I don't know if we can handle Big Sal's quest. Big Sal's quest requires a lot of bullets and a lot of shooty-shooty. Uh, when I played through it, I ran out of shooty-shooty. And that did not work out great for me, but I guess we'll find out. All right, Sal, I resisted your siren call, but uh, I think I need it now. Oh, they got a crafting workbench in here. All right. Got a job? Eh, seems like good timing. As a matter of fact, there is a situation we need you to help with. Uh, go talk. So basically, I accidentally skipped it right there. Uh, 
what he's basically telling us to do is we need to go talk to this guy over here because a number of the scouts for this little kind of settlement have gone missing. You looking to get in with the runners? Could always use more good people around here. Uh, actually, I need help with anything? Yeah, I suppose. I need a package ran down to my brother. He owns a farm down in the grasslands, usually a pretty quiet area, but he's been having issues with bandits, so make sure you're careful. My brother will compensate you for the work when you get there. So give me a campfire and a gun cleaning lubricant. Oh yeah, your guns in this game have quality. Like, they uh, break down slowly over time. It hasn't really been like a huge issue so far. I don't know if it leads to misfires or anything else. Uh, none of my guns have really broken that badly while I've been playing. Uh, but yeah, good. Sal found somebody to help. I would go myself, but with the effect of getting closer every day, I'm needed here. Uh, these runners that I sent are greener than grass. They were supposed to have an easy job, so I doubt the rookies got caught up in some trouble. Uh, if you head up to the compound, see if you can find out what happened and help out. You'll earn my thanks and trust. Good luck. All right. Let me see if I can barter for some more bullets first. Sal, you got you got freebie bullets that you can give your best friend me? You remember how we were best friends? And we're best friends forever? 176 credits right there. 156 for the military hat. Oh, we making money out here today. Okay. Clothing's where it's at. That's what you want to sell. Yeah. All right, so with all of that, what does it cost to get some bullets? Like, I want to have a lot of bullets. Like, I'm I'm excited about the prospect of bullets. You got any 5.56? Five, five, Those are a little bit more pricey, but I'll take them. I don't think I have one credit to pay you with. How about I give you this wooden log? There we go. Now I actually have ammo to play around with. Okay, so where we need to go is going to be, I think, off into the left over here for this quest. So I'm going to head that way. I do like, there's like a little misty snow, like Aurora Borealis Godray thing happening right now at this time of day, which I actually kind of like. But I'm just going to kind of like move down the road. And if I see anything of interest, I'll pull you guys back in after an edit. Oh, look, I found a thing. There's a guy by a little campy fire over here. Hi, hey, buddy. Who are you? Need help making a friend or a new enemy? Uh, oh, there's faction patches. Okay, so we turn in patches stalker style, and we get reputation for it. I don't know if a campfire actually does anything for me. What can I do with a campfire? I can make a fiery soup if I had chili plants and water, if I had meat or rice or, or really anything. I can purify water. Okay. So not, so not crazy important right now, but maybe someday. Small little trailer park over here. Hopefully this trailer park is not as dangerous as the last little logging camp I tried to look at. We do have a, a zombie pulling up. So we'll probably want to deal with that. Sounded for a second like we had another one trucking along. We got an energy drink. Okay. We'll take it. Got another zombie down and over there. Dropped her. What else we got around here? Anything up inside these cabinets that I can interact with? Doesn't look like the cabinets are interactable. That water's not pick up a bull. We do have a bureau back here with a hat inside of it. Hey, clothing has been a high ticket item so far. And anything that keeps the bullet mill spinning, I'm okay with. Can't grab anything there, but we do have a med kit on this side. Uh, it's got a morphine inside of it. Gives you a small health boost and further health boost over time, but you can overdose. Yeah, that, that seems like it might be an issue. Plus, you'll never poop again. That's just an ammo box, and I hear a zombie, so I don't want to get trapped inside with him. I don't think that... Oh, she can get through the fence. Ow. Ow. Listen, lady. I don't have time for these shenanigans. A stick and some cloth. I don't know that a stick is immediately useful. I'll take the scrap. I don't really want your severed arm. I feel like being the kind of guy that wanders around with a severed arm in his backpack, just it, it sort of designates me as the bad guy. Like I feel like that definitely moves us from the realm of good guy into realm of, like, guy that carries around severed human arms in his backpack. 
And so, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that a severed human arm automatically makes you into a terrible person. But I will say that if I discover personally that you have a severed arm in your backpack after we've begun a journey of friendship, like the brave little toaster, I'm going to be a little bit upset about it. I'm going to be like, hey, you know, what's up with the severed arm in your backpack? And I'm going to expect a pretty compelling excuse. Okay, looks like we got this place stripped. Does the glass break? Oh, you got to get on that. Okay. Uh, glass breakages. On, like, surfaces, that little just shatters outwards when you fire through it in the direction that the bullet travels through. Yup, yup, yup. That's one of those little details I expect to see in any game with shooting. I would like to see bullet holes hit walls and stuff like that, too. Uh, having various surfaces that are either penetrable with bullets or non-penetrable. So, basically, cover and non-cover, I think, would be a good idea just to get that immersion level up. Because, ultimately, I feel like what zombie apocalypse games thrive on is immersion level. Like, how immersive is this? Uh, what are you... Oh. What's up, dude? I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna blast you real fast. God. What you got? Electrical scrap and a stick? A man was trying to build Wi-Fi. One bullet, a rope, and some scrap. I stopped checking the cars, because I don't think there's, like, anything in the cars. But being able to harvest scrap or something, if you have, like, a toolbox... Or like a ratchet or whatever would actually be kind of like a cool thing. Uh, let's carry on down the road. Another little thing I noticed is when it's snowing like this, watch when I whip my head. The snow goes away and then starts falling again. That's one of those little polished things that it jumps out to me. I don't think the average person would notice something like that, but I noticed it pretty quickly. Uh, we got a zombie over. We got several zombies over here. I'm going through ammo much more rapidly than I would prefer. I may have to go back for a resupply run because I know what's coming. A skull mask, a stick, and an apple. Oh. What's up, boys? Oh, these ones have glowy eyes, dude. They're doing like a Batman thing. Hold on, I gotta reload game off. Game back on! Yeah, that's, that's all my ammo gone. Not great. Not ideal. Uh, an intact severed head from a husk, probably for scientific purposes only. Huh. I guess I'll take it. So it looks like we have different types of zombies and whatnot, too. Just drop her real quick. Uh, she's got tactical gear on her. She's also got a PM1. Okay, so that's what we already have. If nothing else, at least I've got some loot to take back. That gives us better armor rating than what we have on right now. Oh, I actually had to change clothes. I didn't realize there was going to be an animation. Well, now I want to kill more zombies. I've never gotten anything that... Oh, God! Okay. All right. How many more of you guys are there actively going to be? Good God. I don't know if one bullet is going to be actively altogether that helpful, but I'll take it. Uh, we need to get into this place so that we can find our, uh, our runners that disappeared on us. I don't know if you can actually lose zombie aggro. I guess I can try. Let me see if I can break line of sight. And we'll see if he follows me in here. Ammo container. It's got five bullets in it. Better than what I had. Serena and Lexi are dead, jumped by a group of bandits. Some of the dead attacked before they found me and managed to hide and wait it out. I saw them head north towards the old church in the mountains, and I'm going to follow them to get some justice for the others. If you're reading this, don't follow me. Okay. It actually looks like you can outrun the zombies and, like, break more, well, kind of, I guess. He's back on me now, but he wasn't for a second. So it worked kind of. The directional sound is all over the place for me right now. Uh, 50 caliber rounds. My man was carrying around that big boom boom with him. 
All right, can I loot that? Oh, it looked lootable for a second. Very, very dark in here. I would like to see the flashlight be a little bit stronger. Nope, don't want to go towards that. Apparently, that is deadly radioactive goo. Uh, we've got a hard hat right there. It does give protection. We've got a rebreather, which gives us hazard protection. We've got 11 five, five, six rounds, so that's good. Oh. I believe that there's a very strong chance. That has nine rounds in it. Unload it. Oh, thank Christ. Okay. Um, I like the little sound effect when it unloaded. That was good. Yeah, give me, give me, give me something I can swack zombies with. It's gonna have to do. I ain't got nothing else to play with, so like... Another bullet right there. Break out the blicky. He doesn't rack the slide when you have an empty magazine. That's another detail that I would add on in. Uh, so if you fire all the way to depletion, when he puts a magazine back in, he should have to rack the slide uh, before he'll have one in the chamber. But anyways. Oh no! When I played the game last time, there was an M16 sitting on this desk right here. Now there is no M16. That's why I bought all those 5.56 five, rounds, man. Oh, God. How overweight am I right now? Like, really, really overweight? Oh, I'm not in too bad a shape. I'm all right. I think we're going to have to make a... Oh, there's a recipe? Huh. I thought all the things in the game that I could learn to make were already in here. All right, cool. Uh, so, skull mask. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds good. I think I could live with that. Throw on a hard hat right there for a little bit of extra protection. How does that compare the contractor fatigues to the tactical gear? I mean, I guess we might as well put on the rebreather. I'm gonna have to sell some of this stuff and we gotta buy more ammo. What is that? What you got for me? What is that right there? What you got? What did I just pick up? Radiation pills. Oh, very nice. Okay. Some scrap on the table. Another 9mm bullet. Okay. Throw that on in there. We should probably rest till morning, but you can mod your guns inside of here in case you were wondering. So, like, you can put, like, a red dot on it. You could put a silencer on it if you want. Which, all things considered, is actually probably not the worst idea. Uh, because we have been attracting a lot of attention while we're running around. Unfortunately, I have the, I modded the wrong gun, I think. Indeed, I did. All right, so I got to unload this bad boy. There we go. Much better. I like that reload animation, though. Very snappy, very tight. All right, so we're going to... I don't know what time it is, but we should probably sleep till tomorrow. Because it's kind of like dark and spooples out here. So it sounds as though we've attracted some attention. We regenerated like a little bit of health back. If I use a bandage, is that going to help with my my red bar down there? I can't tell if it helps with my red bar. Either way, let's go ahead and we'll eat some apples and stuff. As you can see, it looks like he's eating like a stick of spearmint gum, uh, no matter what you eat. And look, I, the first thing I ever ate was a protein bar, and I was like, oh, look at that. They have custom eating animations. But then I ate an apple, and it still looked like a protein bar. So I was like, ah, well, you know. Hunger's looking pretty good. Probably drink some Vasa. Yeah, it looks like we're squared up. Uh, here's the long, short, and skinny. I need to go back and buy more bullets. I was not expecting to fire about 50 trillion rounds uh, on our way over here. And I am... Low on ammo. See, the silencer sounds great. I like the way the silencer sounds a lot. Uh, you gotta... 
thing of beans or something on you? All right. Now, we got to find the other dead guy. I think he's over here. Yeah, there's another one of you. I mean, frankly, that was way better than using bullets. That actually worked out okay. There's our other dead guy. Now we got to find the last runner, but I got to go back to town and buy more ammo first. So I'll be right back. The joys of editing. So I'm back. And uh, I had enough money after we sold all that stuff to actually buy a new gun. Unfortunately, oh my god, okay, fair enough. That took way more shots than I thought it was going to take. I think the shotgun definitely needs, like, a buff. Uh, but anyway, we'll try it out on another zombie. Maybe it's because I wasn't hitting those head taps. I don't know. I stopped aiming for head taps because it only felt like they mattered a small amount. What is this, a bunker? Okay. Anything worthwhile in here? Oh. It goes deeper. What you got in this locker? Some cigarettes, some 50 cal rounds, some 5.56, five, some freedom bullets. Okay. First aid kit. Could definitely use some more pills. Pills here. Teddy bear. Ammo container. Those look like magazines, though. What were those? Strange. It says ammo, but they look like magazines to me. I wonder if they're playing around with adding a magazine system to the game like Tarkov has or like uh, DayZ has. I was actually going to suggest that. I like my games to be really, really immersive where I've actually got to collect all the little things that I've got and whatnot in order to make myself, you know, survive. It goes down even deeper. Oh, dude. What is this place? I got kind of like a bad feeling that I'm not supposed to be here. Somebody made a last stand down here. Didn't make it, though. It's kind of hard to see. Like, I'm actively squinting at the screen right now, trying to see what I'm seeing. Ooh, that's radiation. I probably don't want to be near that. Oh, there's a zombie over there. Sounds like there's more of them in the next room. I like that aggressive racking animation for the reload where he's like... Shh, shh. like He like really leans into it. I like it. I didn't get all my electrical scrap, all right? I'm very passionate about electrical scrap. That door don't open. Nothing inside the pipe. Can't get into that door right there. I wonder if I die if I go in water. Nope. Yeah, I'm going to need that to stop. That's just unnerving. I don't like that at all. Also, there's snow falling inside the bunker. They're going to want to see to that as well. Once again, a little polish issue. But yeah, this is far gone. Uh, here's the short and skinny. This game is really early on in its early access journey. That much is apparent. Some things are done really, really well. Movement, looting, world interaction, a good chunk of the animations, they all feel good. The frame rate is silky solid even when I max the game out. And generally, in the daylight, the game looks really great. The world isn't fully populated yet, but there are places to wander around to and explore. There are experience points to gather from killing enemies, bases to build, items to craft, factions to woo, level ups to catalog. I mean, you can get level ups and you can increase your stats. I haven't quite figured out what all the stats do yet, and the perk system hasn't been implemented yet. And then there's a ton of loot just kind of laying around. And so there are things to do inside of here. Uh, that having been said, there's a couple areas of improvement I'd look into. 
Uh, first is gun feel. The guns don't feel very good in this game. I'm just gonna come out and say it. Silence, they feel all right. Uh, but like unsilenced, the guns don't really feel like they have any impact, power, punch, pop, snap. Uh, they need to be worked on. The animations feel pretty good for like the reloads and the general maintenance stuff, like looking at your gun and reloading your gun and, and stuff like that, and like you know ADSing. But the gunfire itself does not feel good for most of the firearms. The shotgun was okay, but the rest of them came off feeling a little wispy. And I think part of that comes from the fact that the enemies don't really react to being shot in a believable way. Like, the game definitely needs more visual recoil, and it definitely needs more of a plosive element. But what I notice is when you shoot enemies, they don't really respond to getting shot. They just kind of soak the bullets and keep doing what they're doing. And when you contrast that with how much your character gets aim punched from just one bullet from an enemy, it kind of pulled me out of the immersion. Uh, so, like, I felt like, you know, when a zombie catches a 12 gauge to the chest, he should get launched and knocked down, basically. When a human enemy eats a 12 gauge slug, point blank to the chest he should feel that he should stagger he should fall down and roll uh, that enemy responsiveness to being shot right there would make the game feel a lot better and then the enemies like the human enemies especially are very very damage soaky in this game and I prefer realism so like two three bullets and somebody is down uh, I prefer more enemies but like a realistic damage model where two or three hits kills them basically um, I think those two things right there, the tankiness of human enemies and the non-responsiveness of enemies being shot, also add to kind of the recoilless, the kind of floaty nature of the guns and, and make them not feel quite as good. Uh, from there, the game seems to have some general visual contrast issues. During the daytime, everything looks good and it has clarity, but at night or when the light source has a blocking surface, like a building in between you and it, uh, things get really muddy and colorless and kind of like blur into each other. Uh, it's not the darkness, it's kind of like under contrast when you're in like a shadow spot or in the night and it doesn't look or feel super great. Uh, guns, they don't remember your firing selection mode when you swap in between your firearms, but that's like a quick fix. Uh, the text was generally too small for me, I found myself squinting at it, but then again it's kind of like a, not a super clear readable text anyways, so it's possible that just an alternate toggleable font in the options might help out there. Uh, movement felt a little bit fast to me, and it deprived the traversal in the game as feeling as though there was weight behind it. It's not super far off, but it is a little bit off and slidey and lacking in heaviness. Uh, you can lean, but you can't lean while crouching, and then you can't lean while moving either, and I'd like to see that change. Uh, and then sometimes the game seemed to get confused about the sound effects of my footsteps, about what kind of surface I was walking on, and would play the wrong sound effect. I'd be walking on a street, and it would be playing the crunch of snow or something like that. Uh, but yeah, the map does seem to have major locations. It does seem to have stuff around and things to explore, and there's quests and there's characters to meet. Uh, the developer has said that the content rollout is on his mind right now as they get into early access, but so that's not really worth mentioning. There's a lot of early accesses out there that don't have a ton of content. Uh, so anyways, there's some definite areas of improvement with Foregone to be considered, but that's to be expected for an early access release. I know that last laundry list sounded like a really, really big list, but I wanted to give really good feedback because this developer is literally patching every single day. Like, he's taking feedback from his Discord and from his Steam, and he's fixing it, like, the next day. Like, entire mechanics and whatnot are being fiddled with in, like, 24-hour turnaround burn periods. And so, anyways, he seems like he's got his eye on the prize. It seems like he's got his head in the game. Uh, I feel like the game foundationally is in a good place. I want to make that clear. Like, the foundations of this game are solid. It's just the polish, the rough edges, the tuning, and the details. Little things like casings being ejected while you fire your gun. Racking the slide when you put in a fresh mag on empty, but not when you have one left in the chamber. Uh, little details like that, and then getting the gun feel to feel really, really nice, that I think are going to be paramount here. But like I said, the developer seems to be aggressively patching the game daily, so chances are all this stuff is going to be taken on board that I've mentioned. I've heard he's incredibly responsive on Discord. Uh, Foregone is currently selling for 16 bucks on Steam. It's the winter sale right now, so chances are you could probably get something a lot more polished and fleshed out with content at that price point. However, uh, Project Zomboid, for example, started out very, very rough back in like 2011 or 12 in the Desura days, and it ended up becoming the king of zombie games from its solid foundation. So don't count a dog out too soon. There's enough right with this game that if the developer can keep his churn rate moving, it'll turn into something special. Until then, I'll probably keep it on my wish list, and that's actually a good thing. That's not a bad thing. 
uh, I want to check back in on this game because there's enough right with it that it's got my eyebrow raised. It's just the things that are wrong or don't feel quite good have got me wanting to wait and see. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking out a zombie apocalypse title called Argon. I will see you all next time. Thank you for stopping on in, and that's all I got for you. Bye, folks.